Welcome to the Gay Catholic Hour, a program of news, entertainment, healing, and affirmation brought to you by Dignity New York, an organization serving marginalized Catholics since 1972. The women and men of Dignity want you to feel right at home, no matter what your sexual orientation, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, or straight. We are all God's children. Hi, and welcome to the Gay Catholic Hour, a production of Dignity New York. I'm Kathy Carter. And I am Chris Cappiello. We're coming to you live on location. Yes, here we are on beautiful Hudson River Park on a balmy uh, winter Risk. afternoon. <laughs> but there's a little sun, so we're not exactly freezing to death. Yes, a uh, fabulous locale for the last Gay Catholic Hour of the 20th century. Absolutely. Like a lot has happened since we last came to you. It's been about a month and there's lots of stuff going on in politics. We had a couple of dinners. There's yes. tons of stuff going on. We had our Dignity New York 27th anniversary dinner at Raymond's Cafe in Chelsea. We'll have a lot more about that later in the show. Yes, we did. And the Defenders had a dinner that I can never remember the name <laughs> that of. That would be Indulgence 2. Indulgence 2. Yes, it is. That was in November, and we'll have a lot more on that. Wonderful. First, we want to go to the news. Yes, a couple of hot news items of interest to gays and Catholics alike. Uh, in California, there is the Knight Initiative, which will be on the ballot in March of 2000. Now, this is basically an anti-same-sex marriage proposal, and unfortunately, the California Catholic bishops have come out in support of this Knight Initiative. Not only that, Catholic diocese, dioceses in California have spent over $340,000 in support of this initiative. Wow. And Dignity USA, our national organization, has come out with a press release uh, denouncing these actions. Our new president, Mary Louise Cervone from Philadelphia, said Dignity USA believes that the proposed law is unnecessary, discriminatory, and mean-spirited. Wow. And not only that, get this, Mary Louise says, a caring and proactive defense of marriage and family would concern itself with supportive ministries to couples and families, addressing problems such as poverty, spousal abuse, health care issues, and parent-child communication. Maybe that's what we should be spending our time on. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Let's hope that all our brothers and sisters out in California vote that right down next March. Um, and Dignity is working to make sure that happens. Wonderful. And closer to home, right here in Westchester County, the Roman Catholic Church and groups allied with it have denounced a, propo a proposal to create a Human Rights Commission in Westchester County, chiefly because the panel would protect gay people from discrimination. Uh, it's sort of unbelievable, I guess, is all I can say about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, being against a human rights commission. Yeah, I, a little unchristian, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> the Archdiocese of New York has reportedly asked priests throughout the county to speak against the proposed commission, which would field complaints of bias in housing, employment, and employment based on race, gender, ethnicity, religion, and sexual orientation. Um, I, I have a ton of information about here, but what it comes down to essentially, um, hundreds of Westchester residents turned out on Tuesday, November 23rd for a public hearing on the proposal. Um, the, quote, the church's primary interest in this matter is not to be anti-gay or to condemn anyone. Uh, that's from the New York Times. The church certainly endorses legal protection for the fundamental human rights of all. Nevertheless, I love those butts that they throw in there. Nevertheless, you ne know what's coming now. <laughs> Nevertheless, we believe that this bill would undermine family and marriage, which mm. it, it saddens me deeply. Um, I guess the civil rights advocates told the 17-member board, uh, I'm sorry, county board of legislators, that the commission was necessary to safeguard basic civil rights for gay men and lesbians. Somewhere in Westchester County right now, there's a 16-year-old boy sitting by himself. He's lonely and he's scared, and he knows that he's gay, and he doesn't know if he's going to live another day, said commission reporter Gene uh, Mettler. Vote for this bill because of that 16-year-old boy. Tell him with clarity and with courage that his civil rights are important and that he is important. The Westchester Coalition for Human Rights on Tuesday released the results of a survey that conducted in September that found that 71 percent of the 507 Westchester residents surveyed were in favor of the commission. In other recent news for our community, on October 25th, Dignity New York held its 27th anniversary dinner at Raymond's Cafe in Chelsea. 
27 years in New York. Pretty incredible. Uh, more than 100 gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered Catholics and our friends and family came out for a wonderful evening and celebration, which included drinks, dinner, and some very special awards. Uh, in addition to all our chapter members and friends, we also had good friends and guests from St. Paul the Apostle Parish, uh, St. Joseph's, and many other local faith communities. Now, at our anniversary every year, we give out the Charles Gormley Award, which is Dignity New York's highest honor. It's uh, given each year since 1981 to the individual who our community feels has made significant contributions to both the larger GLBT community as well as our own local dignity community. This year, the 1999 Charles Gormley Award was presented to Jeff Stone. Jeff has been an active member of uh, Dignity and other GLBT communities for well over 10 years. Uh, among the, the long list of accomplishments for Jeff, uh, he's been a member of our own local steering committee. He's been on the national board of Dignity USA. He was a member of the Cathedral Project of Dignity New York. He's been one of our liaisons to Cardinal O'Connor, holding some very important and effective meetings with the Cardinal. He's Dignity New York's media representative, and he's been a, a very uh, important writer of articles for and about our community. So in short, Jeff is a visionary and proud gay man and a well-deserved recipient of the Charles Gormley Award. I'm, I'm thrilled to, to have been given this award. Uh, I, I wasn't prepared and I don't have prepared for <laughs> That's why we gave it to you. <laughs> um, Eddie made reference to our discussions with the Cardinal. Um, we know that that has borne some fruit with, with the prospects for a hate crimes bill in the state of New York. And we pray for the Cardinal and we pray for the prospects uh, of that work, of the prospects for that bill. Um, I came into Dignity 10 years ago and my introduction to Dignity was witnessing the parade. I was just discussing with James Osborne at, at the table. The dragon of homophobia came down Fifth Avenue and I was there as a spectator and I saw it. And of course it was the most fabulous float that won the prize for that year. So I had to find out what this group was and became involved with it and stood outside the cathedral. Uh, became involved just as Dignity moved into St. John's after being in many different homes over the years. I missed the expulsion and the traumatic uh, aftermath of that event. But I was there during a time of rebuilding. And Dignity became my family. I was, I was part of my coming out. I think that I, I've seen the community only become stronger over the years. Uh, and there have been times of, of doubt and even despair. Uh, we've, seen, we've seen dark things happen. Um, we have Father Bob Nugent and Sister Janine Gramick here with us tonight. I know they're going to speak, or I believe they're going to speak to us. So. Yeah. Um, there's, but I've always believed that the Holy Spirit is at work through this organization and in the church and in the world. And I think ultimately, ultimately, the truth of our experience will be heard, and it is being heard. And I'm just going to close by paraphrasing Mary Louise, what she said in Denver. We don't know that we can always change the church. We don't know who's going to come along. We don't know what big events are going to happen in the world. But we know we're changing hearts and minds. And we're ministering to our own people, and we're changing hearts and minds in the church and in, in the world beyond the church. And I am, I'm thrilled and grateful to be part of, of this movement to do it, um, both here at the local level, and I've only been energized by all my my experiences at the national level, which have been absolutely wonderful, and I, I urge any of you to, to become involved at that level and go to a convention and meet your brothers and sisters from around the country and be energized by that. Thank you again. Now, in addition to the Gormley Award, uh, no doubt you have heard about the recent events this year with Janine Gramick and Bob Nugent, a nun and a priest who were the founders of New Ways Ministry, which has been ministering to gay and lesbian Catholics for over 25 years. And this summer, the Vatican actually silenced them from continuing their ministry, those two individual people from serving uh, gay and lesbian Catholics. Um, 
they were permanently prohibited from any pastoral work involving homosexual persons, is what the Vatican officially said, and that they were ineligible for an undetermined period for any office in their respective religious institutes, which is an unusually harsh uh, condemnation. So, um, in light of their, uh, their long service, we uh, in Dignity New York gave them each an award for extraordinary service to the community. And we're honored and proud to say that uh, both Janine and Bob were with us on October 25th at our anniversary dinner to receive their awards in person. There's a misunderstanding that we have in silence, and that's the, the press is shorthand way of saying what's happened. But actually, um, we've been restricted from certain areas of ministry, namely retreats, workshops, and um, any pastoral initiatives directed to gay and lesbian people and their families. But in terms of speaking in academic settings and parishes, that is no problem. We've been invited by um, an Episcopal bishop in San Francisco to speak at Grace Cathedral. We give the homily in January. They're celebrating, I think, the 20th anniversary of a project called Oasis in, in San Francisco, I believe. We also hope to go to Hall Redeemer and any other place that will invite us. So we are not stop. We will not stop speaking. Um, writing is not a problem. We have to get our writings approved, but that's nothing new in church law. Uh, I just submitted an article that had been accepted by a magazine, but my provincial said it might not be the right time. Let's <laughs> wait a few months before we do any writing. Um, the, the response to this whole case has been overwhelming, and it goes far beyond Janine and myself. Uh, Janine has been laying out in her talks all the various principles of, of from the Vatican Council to justice in the church to account to re responsibility, accountability, subsidiarity, all those things. Women religious are quite concerned that for the first time the CDF has interfered in telling them who they can elect. Now, a lot of people were surprised at that, that we cannot be elected to office, and I said, that's not a punishment, really. That's a blessing. <laughs> but the reason they did it is because in the past when the CDF has disciplined religious their communities turned around and elected them provincials in their off in, in, in an office to kind of show their dis, dis, uh, satisfaction. So that's kind of a political move that we cannot be elected. And that's only temporary. But the ban seems to be permanent unless we can get the American bishops. Bishop Tom Gumbleton has written to 100 bishops asking them to ask the bishops' conference in November to discuss this case and its implications uh, for the whole church and to say that if the bishops of Sri Lanka could get an excommunication lifted, a couple of years ago, you remember an Indian theologian was excommunicated and the bishops in Sri Lanka worked something out. Certainly our bishops could do something if they wanted to. Uh, that remains to be seen at the bishops meeting in November. But we've gotten over a thousand emails, letters, cards, notes from all kinds of people, including a bishop in South Africa who emailed and said he was quite disturbed with it. So, it has touched off a lot of actions, a lot of activity. Uh, we're not canceling any of the retreats we have for parents because other priests and sisters are coming forward and saying, I'd like to help, I'll do the retreat for you if you can't do it. So out of this has come a great deal of good. It generates more discussion in the church and we feel it's best to stay in the community and work, continue to work perhaps in another way a different modus operandi, but nevertheless to continue what we've been trying to do for many years. I want to share with you in closing a little card that I've been sending to people who have written to me. It's a quote from Father Bernard Herring, who died, I think, last year, uh, two years ago, of cancer. He was under investigation by the CDF, and um, his, his famous quote was, and he he Herring endured the uh, persecution by the Nazis during the war, and he said, given my choice, I'd rather deal with the Gestapo <laughs> than the CDF, because they were really pressuring him even in the midst of his cancer treatments. But he wrote a book called My Witness for the Church, and, and this is a little selection of it, which, which I think sums up my feeling at the present time after this experience. He said, I love the church because Christ loved it, loved it to the utmost extreme. I love it even when I discover painful attitudes and structures which I do not find in harmony with the gospel. 
I love it as it is because Christ also loved me with all my imperfections, with all my shadows, and constantly gives me the fruits of his kingdom so that my love may correspond to his eternal plan. I experience the church in the celebration of the Eucharist. Christ and the church with him remind me of all the limitless evidence of love, grace, and mercy. In this, the church helps me to form a grateful memory. And if we open ourselves to this and gratefully remember all the good which has flowed to us in the church, constantly flows to us, then we can and will all succeed in giving even suffering from the church its place in the heart of Jesus. And I think that sustains me, and I hope it sustains a lot of you also to continue your witness, your work in the church that we are all a part of. church doing for my gay brothers and sisters and I feel I have tried to answer that call from Dominic and that call from God but as many of you know I couldn't have done it without your prayers and your help and certainly without the support of my religious community the school sisters of Notre Dame and I want to tell you one story in the this long process of this investigation which started in 1988. Last summer, my provincial and I were going to Rome to meet with our general counsel because it was one of the times that the CDF had asked us to make some kind of response. And we, uh, we knew what they wanted. They kind of told us the answers to give. <laughs> and I had some discussions with my provincial and my superior general and I met with the general counsel and we kind of knew I what I couldn't I couldn't say what they wanted me to say. So we were praying for a miracle. And so my, my provincial and I decided well well we were going to go on pilgrimage from Rome to Munich to pray at the tomb of Mother Teresa, who's the foundress of our congregation. That's not the Mother Teresa of India, but Mother Teresa of Germany. And we, uh, we were going to Munich. We were in the Rome airport, and also waiting in the Rome airport for a plane to Munich was a gentleman in a black suit with white hair, and um, my provincial said, you know, that looks like Cardinal Ratzinger. <laughs> And I said, no, I don't think so. He's, this guy's very old looking and looks tired. He's probably some low level bureaucrat. You know? So we get on the plane and uh, oh, five seats behind us is this gentleman in his black suit and white hair. And the two seats next to him are free. So um, I sat down right beside him and I said, uh, oh, are you a priest? And he said, yes, because, you know, those European uh, clerical suits aren't, you know, they don't have Roman collars. So, yes, he said he was a priest. And I said, oh, well, I'm a sister, and uh, I'm going to uh, Munich, and I'm a school sister of Notre Dame. I'm visiting our mother house there. Do you know the school sisters of Notre Dame? Oh, yes, I know the school sisters of Notre Dame. <laughs> He said, my aunt was a school sister. Now I knew who it was because he had an aunt in our community. I said, but I said, oh, well, what was her name? Ratzinger was her name. So, well, anyway, um, I was saved by the steward or stewardess. <laughs> and uh, because we were told to buckle up, I ran over to my seat five rows ahead and told my provincial, I said, that is Cardinal Ratzinger. And so, uh, 
as we're, um, we didn't say anything to each other as we're eating our lunch and we're both figuring out what we're going to do. And of course, I knew what I was going to do. As soon as I was finished my lunch, I was going to get up and I was going to talk with them. I couldn't let this opportunity go by. But at any rate, she beat me to it. When, when our lunch was, was finished, she, we both stood up and she said, you sit down. And so she went back to talk with him and um, told him what a good sister I was. <laughs> and, uh, however, I wasn't, uh, he wasn't going to get everything from me that he wanted, but I was speaking from my heart. Uh, and he asked her if, um, if I would be willing to, to speak with him, and, I said, and she said, of course. So she came back and told me, and then I went back the second time to five rows back and sat down next to him. And his words to me then, as he knew then who I was, he looked at me with a twinkle in his eye and said, oh, I have known you for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> he knew my file for 20 years. <laughs> so we had a very pleasant conversation. So um, uh, talking about, uh, I mentioned about Dominic, how I got involved in the ministry. He wanted to know, um, how did I meet the father? I said, oh, well, the father met me. <laughs> Meaning, meaning Father Nugent, and um, talking about vocations and so on. At any rate, a year, um, uh, well, six months after that, Bob got the uh, profession of faith that they wanted him to sign, and I didn't get it. So we all thought that was because I had a friend. <laughs> <laughs> but we later found out, well, no, not quite. It, um, it was because I, I didn't say everything I didn't that that they wanted me to say I did not give I chose not to give my opinion about what the church teaches at any rate where are we now as you know the notification has uh, come out we were surprised with the results because well, when my provincial spoke with him it appeared that we were going to get like a silencing for a year or two but not a permanent um, a permanent uh, prohibition at any rate, as you know, as many of you have done, many of you have written letters to Cardinal Ratzinger to have this reconsidered. Uh, and you've written to the to the um, Apostolic Nuncio and also to the President of Bishops Conference, Bishop Fiorenza. And we know that um, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of those letters have have gone in. And we know from our friends, our little moles at the USCC, that. Initially, some of you may have gotten responses, but now they, they, there are so many, they just can't answer all the letters. They're just answering VIPs. So if you're either a VIP or you wrote early, then you got a response. I'm told by, by various people across the world that uh, this has really made international news, and the, the value of it is now people are talking. And Back at the USCC, where I said that they're not answering those letters anymore, our friends tell us that someone is reading them, if not the high-level people, like the secretaries who work there, who never thought about homosexuality before, never thought about lesbian or gay people, and they're reading these letters that come in from parents, that come in from gay and lesbian people, that come in from heterosexual people who are outraged. And um, they say, oh, is that what the church teaches? Well, really? Well, that doesn't seem right. You know? And people who had never thought about the issue before, their consciousness is being raised. So, you know, in the long run, it's having a wonderful effect. And I guess I'd just like to close by, again, uh, telling you about my community and my community support and our foundress, Mother Teresa of Germany, who said to us over a hundred years ago when she was writing to our sisters that the works of God proceed slowly and in pain, but their fruits are the sturdy, the lovelier, and their roots are the sturdier. Sturdier roots and lovelier flowers because the works of God proceed very slowly and in pain. And that's what I think we, we have to hold on to, the crucifixion, but the resurrection that follows. So thank you again. Thank you.
Well, next up, we are going to look at some footage from Indulgence 2. That's the Defenders Dinner that was held on November the 3rd. November 13th, 13th. at uh, the Fashion Institute of Technology. And our own fabulous Will Berger was one of the MCs for the evening, uh -huh. along with uh, Pansy from the Imperial Court and the fabulous comedian uh, Greg Wallach. Now, there were uh, a couple of honorees. There were indeed. They honored uh, David Johnson and Gary Robinson with their Outreach Award for 1999. Uh, those two gentlemen uh, own and operate the Tom of Finland clothing line. Makes me want to run out and buy so, some now. Yes, you can imagine what those clothes look like. So uh, we got lots of great footage from this exciting event. So let's just get right to it. To the videotape. Welcome to Indulgence 2. The second annual, whatever this is. <laughs> I asked Tom Saparito why this was called Indulgence 2. And he said, because last year was Indulgence 1, so we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> so we have a very long title at Dignity. It's something like we're a family of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, some straight friends, and any Michigas you've got, Catholics. <laughs> and the defenders are the Leather, Levi, and Michigas fraternity with indignity. <laughs> and Pig Latin has taken on a whole new meaning at the defenders. It's really exciting. <laughs> This isn't curing cancer, but what we do does have deeper meaning. And we have found that the friends we've made in the leather community, a community that to a neophyte like me might seem um, a bit intimidating, were in reality among the most inclusive, accepting people we've ever encountered. In coming to terms with our own understanding of the Tom of Finland image, Gary and I have found that the inclusive, sex-positive, confident outlook of the Defenders and of the entire leather community sits perfectly with what we want to say in our design. Well, it looks like that's it for this month's installment of the Gay Catholic Hour. That's right. We do want to tell you about our special Christmas Eve liturgy. That's right. On December the 24th at 7 p.m. at the, in the Grand Hall at Judson Memorial Church at NYU. That's right. Carols begin at 6.30. Yes. So we'll entertain you while you get there early to make sure you get a seat. Otherwise, you may be out in the cold. That's right. Which so, we can relate to today. <laughs> 7 o'clock at Judson Memorial Church right on Washington Square. We'll see you there. Now, we also have a Saturday liturgy to tell you about. Yes, uh, every week, Saturday Mass at 8 o'clock at the Lesbian and Gay Community Services Center on Little West 12th Street. And... Every Sunday night, Mass begins at 7.30 and is followed by a social. And on Sundays, we meet at St. John's in the Village on the corner of Waverly and West 11th Streets, just west of 7th Avenue. And if you for don't, more, for more information, information, you can call the number <laughs> at the bottom of your screen. And if you can't find a pencil, don't, don't panic. panic. We're listed in the book under Dignity New York. So call us. And watch us next month, same time. Same station. So until next time, be proud you're Catholic. And be proud you're gay. So, so long. long.